Yo, hey everyone, Brian with you from the GameCom, and we're back playing some more Disco Elysium. So we are caught back up to where we were before we inexplicably died. Uh, yeah, so uh, one thing I should note is we did end up talking to Sylvie again. Uh, she's the one we radioed on the phone, and we ended up getting another mission. So if you remember last episode when we talked to her, we had the option of uh, pressing her or being sympathetic with her. And this time I actually rolled properly, and it turns out the whole reason she ended up quitting her job was because she, uh, because I was the worst customer of all customers. Um, apparently I tried flushing some police documents down the toilet. Uh, I had a thing with the bird that I, like, threw it against the wall, screaming at it. I kept singing weird, crazy songs. And I ended up getting a mission from her to talk to Garte. He's the dude behind the bar who's not a bartender. Uh, basically telling him, hey, uh, she didn't quit because of, of, of him, but because of me. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's try this again. Let's hopefully we can roll this maybe a little bit better this time 72% we moral credit again and we just straight died again my god the odds on this that's a 72% chance and I just straight died again uh all right um did I die I I I just want to die okay just just let me die. Just let me die and let's try this roll again. Man, what the heck? The funny thing is I did try this really quickly right before. Um, luckily, I ended up saving. We got to probably start saving a little more often in this game. I wonder if there's a hotkey for save. Probably. Because uh, that's kind of annoying just to, like, miss roll. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but to straight die is kind of hilarious. Um, but I did test it, like, right before I hit record, and we uh, passed it with no problem. So uh, it, it's kind of hilarious. We just had some really bad luck again twice in a row. All right, try this again. Thank you. All right, so there are several footprints in the mud left by work boots. Anywhere from six to 12 pairs have walked here. Maybe more than 12? No. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Go over them one by one. Standard work boots, steel reinforced force toes, no 46, number 46, man. Um, number 44, number 43, 45, or 46. Wait, which one is it? You don't know. It's a miracle you can tell the prints apart as it is. The cold must have preserved them. Count more. Another standard work boot, steel reinforced toe, number 44. Four. Aberration, light as air, even pace, same make of boot, number 41, male or female, impossible to tell, could also have been an adolescent, the gate is undeveloped, I'm pretty sure I'm good at this, ain't I? <laughs> You're not bad, it's as if the whole world darkens, everything else has a thin film of unimportance on it, and the tracks burn in the middle of it, in a strange, beautiful way, count the rest. Glowing outline is standard work boot 46. Okay. And yet another standard work boot number 44. There's aberration pattern on the sole, however. The right sole is smoother, more warm. How many? He's been tracking your eye minutes. Movements. 400 million. Eight. I'm a good cop. I was pretty off then. I counted 20. Uh, the same guys are going back and forth. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. He points at his glasses. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? Uh... Light step number 41 shoe. A woman or a kid? I don't think there's any way to be sure. Uh, a heavy one. 200 kilograms. He thinks for a moment. Could be a combined weight of two people. One carrying the other who tied it up. Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built soon to be dead man. Uh, he might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. Uh, maybe one of them was carrying him over. Possibly, yes. I'm actually turning into a good cop here. But why? You're thinking why did they have to carry him? Yeah, they could have used a makeshift stretcher or just marched him up the gallows. Maybe the victim wasn't conscious. Even easier to carry on a stretcher between two men. Hmm, and then the aberration, one soul is smoother than the other. Let's name it Odd Soul. Do you have any ideas? Someone operated a workbench with a pedal, like a joiner at the harbor, he thinks for a second, or maybe a drummer. So one of the people we're looking for is a drummer? No, it's not. Forget I said it. We're not looking for a drummer. <laughs> He raises an index finger. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator's on the right. I was thinking the exact same thing. He does not seem to hear you. Looking south towards the traffic jam instead. The machines are silent. The engines are all turned off. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as potential suspect. Seems prudent? Yes, prudent. Okay, how old do you think these tracks are? A week, maybe seven days? Okay, it's not impossible. I pulled last week's forecast for uh, Coastal Revolical. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of the hanging was the last warm day. 
correct again, sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have uh, taken place a week ago. What do you think happened here? What do I think? A mob of people brought some heavy, something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed, they all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. Yes, everything fits so well. Carried him over, hoisted him up, watched him hang. This is easy. I think we have a firm understanding. Lieutenant's eyes narrow. He's thinking to himself, okay, we've been through it all. Let's go. Nice. Uh, one other thing I wanted to do is I noticed this fence over here. We, we had some options with it, which uh, I missed the last time we were here. So, uh, perception. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Why am I looking at this? Uh, reconstruct the movement. We should have maybe saved after the last one. The tire tracks were left here by an unknown event that took place some days ago. It's a message written in the language of burnt rubber. Mmm, so something came in, crashed, and then reversed out. Some of that rubber stuck to the tires at the front of the whirling rags. This is point A. The driver started there, accelerated straight into the fence, left a hole big enough for the Franconian cavalry, according to the cafeteria manage, uh, manager. And then the driver proceeded to back out of the yard, barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building. Ooh. Before heading south. Must have been in a hurry. A car drove through the fence. You are correct. This is a rather... This is a rather motor carriage friendly city. Is this connected to the case? I'm not sure. There are plenty of traffic accidents waiting to happen. Okay, you could follow the track south. I think I got it. Hmm. All right. All right. Can we hot save? I want to look at options. Let's look at. Crap. F4? Don't hit F4. F5? Quick save. Okay. I don't want to accidentally quick load, so we got to just hit quick save a little more often here. Just because I don't want to redo some things, I don't mind miss rolling. Like, we'll keep it going. I'm not going to keep reloading for saves, but I definitely don't want to, like, die again and have to do everything over. So the kid's ri uh, ladder is rickety, but still climbable. The ladder's for kids. It wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. Interesting. How did they get him up here? So the corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like, and his tongue is a ball. His tongue is like a, gall a ball gag in his mouth. My gosh. You seem to be holding your breath. Look down. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell steeps, seeps in, uh, even through your clenched nostrils. Uh, let go your nose without throwing up. <laughs> God, what is that? Why is it so bad? Active decay. Uh, the lieutenant raises a white piece of linen to his nose. It's okay to throw up, officer. No one is judging. He's about to blow. The cop's about to blow, Kuno. Yep. The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth. More instant and more familiar than anything you'd expect. More fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Try to walk away. Nope, we get on. We gone. All right. Now that we got that out of our system. <laughs> Dude, what's with his boots? Too late. Impossible to keep it in. Your body curls and pushes out burst by burst. We didn't lose HP, though, until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. Uh, the smell of Com Commodore Red rises from the pool. Among it, distilled spirit and bits of shish kebab. Uh, fucking corpse. Lieutenant cute, uh, hands you a blue checkered handkerchief. Keep it, he says. Uh, thanks. I'm gonna wipe your mouth. Uh, the hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. Where do we get ammonia from? The young woman, the gardener. Ugh. If she doesn't have any, there might be some in the fridge store nearby. Having ammonia is a modifier to the endurance check. Modifiers make checks easier and allows you to retry them. Eh. Okay, so we got to go pick up some ammonia then. Interesting. Do I have money? Someone's trying to grow herbs in this greenhouse. Uh, I don't know. Let's come over here real quick. What is this? Yo, yo, yo. Yo. The wench mechanic, uh, mechanism's been oxidizing for some years. Where are we at? Yo, come here. Can I not get over here? All right. Maybe we can come back there some other time. Maybe we have to go through the door or something like that. So we could follow the tracks, but I think I'm going to go pick up the Imodium. Uh, just because I want to go uh, get this part done with. Now, I did notice I had a couple more conversations with her when we were going through things. Same thing with the kid. 
So I think I missed some stuff last episode. It's not really that big of a deal. I don't think anything was too major, but all right. Hopefully we can get this and we're gonna try getting it for free because I'm a freaking cop, man. Yo, I need some ammonia. Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really. She know looks up from her magazine, eyes filled with tired uni. Uh, yes, she hitches her thumb towards the end of the counter. What we have is the medicine. Go take a look. Do. Do. Also, I didn't notice this before. You see raincoats. So we could try buying or we could try stealing. Uh. Where the freaking heck is this? Hi. Oh, it's this one. Aha! Okay. A small cabinet on the walls filled with various mess and bottles. Cool. Their logo is the Bloodless Rose. I forgot to do this before. So, can I have some Dronamine? I guess I'm going to buy some ammonia. What do these products do? I think we did this last time. Yeah, can you be more specific? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did this last time, and I didn't click this this last time I was here. So, I want to buy some ammonia. Cool, thank you. Task update. Now, let's go inspect the body. Interesting. So, I kind of like this, the fact that, like, you can alter and, you know, help get better rolls and stuff like that by using equipment. It's very, like, this game is very d and I love it. The other thing I noticed and I hadn't clicked on before is we have this whole thing here, which is great. So it seems like the better we have, you know, the more skill points we have in something, the better every one of the rolls is going to be. So, I kind of like it. We might want to up our charm, but we might want to just keep the build we got going. Because usually you just want to stay pretty heavy in one. If we're playing D&D, maybe? I don't know. Okay, yo, what's up? So, we now got an 8% chance. <clears throat> I think we failed again. No, we totally failed again. <laughs> uh, so, what are you supposed to do now? Uh, the ammonia only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your ducts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. I don't think I want to be a cop anymore. Get a hold of yourself. <laughs> I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You're facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. This isn't fun. I don't want to be a policeman anymore. Okay, you said it. You needed to say it, and now you have it. He will. Uh, he withdraws his hand from your back and looks you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. But I don't want to get my shit together. Okay, uh, then the world will turn away from you and leave you behind. Okay. Thought gained. Volumetric shit compressor. We should go talk to the locals, find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You have received a thought. When this thought dialogue's over, go to your cabinet and equip it. Give it a half hour to give yourself together and then come back and have another go. Oy. Okay. 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 So we can't do this right now then. What's our new thought? Uh, your shit is apart and it's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. It's supposed to be the opposite of that. Together, compressed in a small area. To achieve a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes. Do something similar with two hemispheres of your brain. Talk to people, maybe that'll help. So, I can't internalize it right now, because I'm still doing the feminist agenda. And I already got this one. Maybe that would actually... Maybe I'm supposed to internalize this so I can actually... Yeah, because I only have three, it looks like. Ah! So, I can use a skill point to unlock. I apparently had a skill point. Okay, so we're now working on that as well. I'm confused. How did I have... Oh, I can still level up. You do not have enough skill points. Where the heck is my skill point thing? So I don't have any skill points anymore, but where the freaking heck did I see? Like, where did it show that I had skill points? All right. Well, let's keep exploring then for the time being while we wait for us to be able to get our shit together. The letter R wears a crown on the ribbon below, a light above descending. Okay, this is the logo of the municipality, municipality of Revacol. Alright, let's try the cars then. 
We could also go in this little gate here, I noticed before, too. I don't know what's in here. Maybe? Maybe I need a key for this. Okay. Is there anything I can look through here? No. Hello, who are you? Are you a crazy kid, too? Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. A young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you smiling. Her nose is also red from the cold. Uh, from the cold. I am the law! She stomps her feet to feel warmer. Interested in a new and exciting book? What kind of store is this anyways? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Okay. Psh, books, postcards, easy, even a kid would know all this. Little girl, I know what a book is. Books are like the very long letters with stories inside them. Yes, that's exactly it. I also know what a postcard is. It's a small cardboard picture that you can send to a friend or a loved one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got it, sir. What about board games? Who cares about board games? No one? Uh, I care about board games. I like playing games with people's minds. Okay, sir. This was all very enlightening. <laughs> can I, uh, okay, I want to ask sir. you some questions. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. What's your name? My name's Annette, sir. My mom, her name is Palatience. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register or organizing the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts her eyes wide as if we're calling something. Feel free to stop in and browse our wares. And you're standing out here in the cold because... I'm signaling that the store's open, she nods eagerly. Otherwise, people might know, not know. They miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I should have a word with the store owner, maybe. Such a good trooper you are. Already learning the value of hard work patter on the head. I could help by brutally dismantling the free market. Oh, this is tough. I want to pat her on the head, but I want to brutally dismantle the free market. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to help. Mom out with the store. She doesn't seem to understand what you said. Shouldn't you be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help mom keep this place running. School is stupid. You're lucky not to be there. Mom says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mom says a proper worker is dutiful, and that's how you get ahead in life if you succeed. There are stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. How's the business going? Mom says it's peachy. She said I was a little afraid at first. There's talk about the house being cursed. Cursed in what way? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. They all go. She looks for the right word. Bankrupt? Exactly, but we've been doing fine so far. This sounds rather serious. I should probably look into this. <laughs> we can go into the bookstore and ask about the case, but I don't see much more to look into. The lieutenant makes a note in his notebook. Yes, she tips. Please also look around at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there. What do you know about the other failed businesses? Nothing really, sir. Mom doesn't allow me to sneak around the back rooms or the cellar. I don't really know what's there. How does this curse manifest itself? It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I like it better when we're talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in freezing weather. But Kim, the Flasmic Manifestations. No such thing. Uh, all right, enough about the curse for now. What is this crime business? Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime. Wait, not crime fiction? I need to know what crime is. Okay, I get it. Crime murder gets the people going. <laughs> and it's kind of like a puzzle, too. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. I'm a policeman myself, by the way. The law, as I said. You don't look much like a policeman, she examines you. Uh, okay, well then, maybe I'm not a policeman. Maybe I should stop being. Wait, well, what does a cop look like? Didn't mean to offend you, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just, you didn't look like Dick Mullen. She points to the book cover on which you see a strapping, uh, vespertine officer. He stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. Uh, I used to be exactly like that, but then I used to live a little. You know, nobody actually looks like the guy in the picture. It's not your body that's important in police work. It's your head. Wow, look at the guy. I'll never be good as him. Hmm, actually, another question. I decided to live a little. What's that mean? Uh, you know, cut loose, raise hell, blow off steam. And everything's better now, sir? I don't know. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, you can never be true ha truly happy with who he is. You'll understand when you're older. Oh, okay. She blinks at you, not knowing how to reply. I shouldn't have said that thing about Dick Mullen. Uh, it's not your body that's important. It's your head. Head, yes. No, your mind. Not head, child. Head ass. <laughs> Heads. 
flexibility. There's a million different people out there and you have to get into their heads. Sometimes you gotta be a killer to catch a killer. Ooh, I like this. Isn't that very dangerous? Policemen live and breathe danger, little girl. Mullen obviously lacks the chameleonic skill. Unlike you, sir, she smiles mischievi uh, mischievously. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. Dang right. Okay, okay, I'm gonna deduce something now. Let's go. No! Should've saved. Should have saved. Should have saved. Despair creeps into you. Getting fat on your weakness. Whatever noble tensions what's had you a police officer, it's eating them all up now. Um they don't deserve it. I don't dispute that. Poverty is just poverty. I'm not sure how I feel about the whole you know, miss roll, you die. 72% chance critical failure. We are having some freaking luck, man. That's the third time we've critically failed a 72% chance. Wait. Where was our quick save? Yo. Oh, this was after the ammonia. Oh my god. So you're saying I gotta go puke again. And then we gotta go do the kit again. Maybe we can actually see where our freaking points are. Yeah, it looks like we have total of one. No, total of four. I don't know. We could try our endurance leveling it up. But I think I'm still gonna save the skill point and do it here. Well, you know, we actually have a chance to succeed on this now. Uh, let's try it again. We failed again. Cool. Blah. Blah. Come on. Come on, hurry up with the pukes. Hurry up with the pukes. I mean, it was only 8%. I don't think I want to be a cop anymore. Seriously, I don't want to be a policeman anymore. Okay. Continue, continue. Uh, turn away. Go down here. Unlock slot. Confirm. Internalize. Cool. Let's go explore yet again. Oy. Feel like feel like we're doing some of the same crap over and over again. It's like rolling a one in D&D. But then every time you roll one, you just instantly die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, quick save. Hello, girl. Hello, I am a cop. Hi, I'm the law. Uh, what kind of store is this anyways? Books are long letters. I know what it is. I like playing games with people's minds. Uh, whoopsie. Whoopsie, we already did this one. Can I ask some questions? What's your name? You're standing out in the cold because... Such a good trooper you are. I could help brutally dismantling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shouldn't you be at school? Uh, school is stupid. Trying to click the same one. Cursed in what way? Bankrupt. I should probably look into this. How have they failed? How does it manifest itself? Kim, just trying to pick the same ones. Enough about curses. What is crime business? I need to know what crime is. Is that bad? Well, I would want anyone want to re- Oh, I didn't do this one. Uh, crime is a deviation from law punishable, but either it's what law prevents. Why would anyone want to ream about it? Crime murder gets the people going. I'm a policeman, I'm the law. Actually, we did do this. Uh, uh, what does a cop look like then? I used to be like him, but then I lived a little. I don't know. Uh, you'll understand when you're older. It's your brain. Four hours just to come up with a single different idea. You gotta be a killer to catch a killer. The yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, here we go. Can we quick save now? No. All right, good, good, good. Uh, hey, why do you keep your hands folded? What do you mean, sir? So literally, I just freaking had a mind break because I couldn't ask her why she keeps her hands folded. 
Uh, what do you mean, sir? She looks worried. You don't need to be worried. I'm here to help. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. The lieutenant stands by looking at the two of you with little interest. It's okay. She brings out her reddened hands. Her nails are frayed, nearly chewing down to the flesh. You bite your nails. And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? She shoots you a suspicious glance. It's super simple for a detective such as myself. Well, that proves nothing. Anyone can do an easy deduction like that, her eyes, except, you know, me before, before I re-rolled. Uh, want more? I bet I can figure out why you bite your nails. I got a few reasons in mind. She nods. You keep, you're up tight because your mother and the presence she's putting on you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe so, so she says. Okay, I know a little. I know it's a bad habit, and I shouldn't. Either way, another ace deduction by number one detective in town. It was okay, sir. She's still got a rebellious streak. There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. All right, to do something about me. You're quite sober. The lieutenant does not flinch at the comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He is intensely not flinching. It takes effort. Wait, how do you know I'm usually not? Yeah, about that. Could you point me to some booze? Uh, for 10, maybe? Alcohol is not good for you, sir. <laughs> there she stands, swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar somehow. There's something you're missing. All right, we failed. You have absolutely no idea, familiar how. You must have forgotten something. What is romance? Uh, it's the type of book where there's this rich lady, she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. She smiles at the thought, perhaps imagining herself in the situation. What about a poor man getting a rich lady? It happens, but usually the guy gets rich in the process, or should actually be rich himself. But he's lost his family property. Okay, whatever, whatever. Uh, why are both of the men bad? They're not very common, you can't have a choice between bad and bad. No one wants to read a story like that. Uh, what about when everyone's poor? That's not really a proper romance story. Yeah, poor people are boring. Uh, what about a book where the man and lady business doesn't work out at all? I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask mom. Yeah, she has one about an excruciatingly painful breakup. I don't think a romance story if the main character breaks up, though. No, no, think about it. One where they plunge into a torrid spiral of pain and a recrimination, only it's really long and drawn out, scarred for life, phantom limb. Uh, no? Doesn't ring a bell? All right, ask your mom. That's enough romance. I had other questions. Who are these famous people? Oh, kings and queens, generals of old, or artists and writers or musicians, those kind of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. I think that's why people read them. Okay. Reading doesn't make them more... F Wait, reading those doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? But it does make famous people more famous. Fame sounds delicious. Maybe someday uh, someone will write a book about me. Yeah. I want to be famous. Why wouldn't they do that, sir? Because I'll be a superstar cop. Yep. That's so cool. Maybe they'll make a book cover about you. Yeah. All right. I'll see you around, chick. What you got? This book has rose and a pest pistol. Oh, 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 oh. No, no, no. Another thought. Another thought. Yeah. The book is titled Man from Hajal the w and Wildfire. Interesting. This map's pretty big right now. Just kind of clicking through everything to see if there's anything else. All right, let's go talk to the mom. Let's yell at her for leaving her small daughter outside in the freezing cold. And let's make sure she knows I'm the cop. Definitely want to, like, emphasize that. All right, what we got here? Gift books and molten candy. Old sports magazines tucked away in a corner. Book clicks, recipes of Arda. Yo, I actually don't care about your books. Where's my Where's my board games? That's what I want to know. These are books. I don't see board games in here. What's here? Ooh. Shelf of biographies. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I got to finish my thought here. Thought complete. Volumetric shit compressor. Hey, we finished it. Congratulations. Uh, bizarre scientific news from Revacol West today, where a police officer shit himself has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only in the center of collapsing stars. It remains to be seen how long the shit singularity lasts. All endurance white checks unlocked. Learning cap for endurance raised by four. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Still not quite a feminist yet. 
So, you know what? With that done, with that done, let's go look at the body, because I would actually like to advance the story here. As much as I want to keep yelling at people and telling them I'm a cop, I want to actually do a little bit of cop work here. Revishaw is pronounced Oranya. Revacall, Revacall is Revishaw. Oh, it's Revishaw. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So not Revacall, Revishaw. Interesting. Hello. I love how they put that there. Okay, let's do this again. Let's not puke. 72% now, let's go. Boom. As you breathe, the odor comes over you. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your side and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Challenge success, it's a puzzle. What's hanging in front of you is a puzzle of decaying flesh tattoos and tendons. Uh, do they always do that? They do after several days, yes. We're in deep de uh, decomposition here. Step closer. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears to be industrial in strength. Expect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. It's clean, white stands in stark contrast to the cane flesh. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. Okay. Uh, delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots, they're armor, possibly part of a larger set. These aren't just boots, are they? This is the armor he was stripped of. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. Oh, Lieutenant uses a A6. That's not just a notebook, it's a classic. Thanks, super useful to know. It's all you, baby. <laughs> Semantic plate, zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where they make would be. Where? Under the heel, Fairweather. Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing an Apple. Okay, cool. Where's the rest of it? Savaged by the locals? He nods piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It'd be odd if they didn't. New task. Where's the rest of the armor? She keep looking out for these pieces. The armor could yield information. He nods towards the red-haired uh, boy eyeing you suspiciously. Maybe he'll know something. Maybe he's just wearing the boots and there's no rest of the armor. No, he must have worn something precious underneath the clothes. They removed the clothes to get to it, and they did not strip him of the future drags. Then... What if they told him to strip him before they hung him to demean him? They usually hang them in complete naked for that. Okay. Fucking talking about underpants. Clearly, Kuno would like to inject with something here, but there's not enough for him to hold on to. The material looks out of place here. It is. It's expensive. Cool. Uh, we requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. They deem it too costly. How much are we talking here? For a full set, about four years of wages. Oh my gosh. For the Northwest region, officer yearly income of five, uh, 550 real. Wait, my yearly pay is 550? Not too much, yes. Pathetic. I need to hustle more. I hate less. I have no idea what that means. Uh, how could he afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. He's looked pretty advanced for a security guard. I agree. Way beyond what a guard can afford. Knock on the boot. Uh, sounds fragile. It is anything but the materials Connecticut. A uh, kinetic redistributor. Spreads kinetic energy. Uh, see? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. What does this remind me of? If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross-section would look like. Run your fingers over the line. The smooth, glossy surface fractures and even more intricate interconnections peek at the right sabaton where you notice. Okay. The whorls and the shape of the letter and number com uh, combination. 50, 100, 1,000. Looks like they're serial number. Good. Can you read it to me? Let's read the right one. That doesn't sound like a serial number. Where's the structure and logic of line manufacturer? He paused. No matter. We should run it anyways. True. It didn't have a cadence and logic to real manufactured. Actually, I don't know why I lied. The number is E500. Officer, decomposing corpses temporarily suspended my sense of humor. Anyways. I don't know which is the right one. We have a making number. Okay, cool. Pull the boot off. Stench fills your nostril. Stop! Pig's gonna pull his head off. Brutal. What? Even the mongrels can see you're about to pull his head off. Oh, okay. Do what? Pull his head off. There's no point performing an autopsy if you do. We'll have a comprise in the corner's case. Uh, all right. Being dead for a week has mollified him. These boots would go super well with my bell-bottom pants. 
You do understand the boots are steeped in cadaver oil uh, order, don't you? Can't I just wash them? You'd have to boil them in acid besides. There's no way you can get them off. All the organic matter in his body has flown down to the boots. They're fused to his feet now. Eh. Steal dead man's boots, but that would be dishonorable. Refuse for honor. All right, then. How can you pay the hostile bill in honor points? How many honor points do you collect? There are honor points? Of course there are. Don't be naive. What's going to happen to the boots, then? Processing them will take care of them. With the situation, the morgue will yield nothing. But we must not pick our fights. Should we continue? I'm going to back off and look at the... Let's look at the belt. So the knot is tied by, uh, pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow hard edge polyester cuts into his neck above a sliding buckle, ties the belt to a branch. It's the steel reinforced cargo lashing belt, big brother of the regular cargo belt. It's used for tying cargo under six rotor airships. Don't ask me how I know this, but this is a lashing belt. Airlifting, I thought it was used on lorries. Apparently this is a reinforced kind for air transport. My brain tells me so. He nods. Local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense that they use whatever was on hand without paying too much attention. We're going to assume dock workers from the harbor did it. I'm still approaching this as a lynching yes. Feels like it was something else. The belt worries me. They sure wanted him to stay up there. The rope is reinforced with steel whirling. I'm afraid it would be. This thin steel parallel strands, this makes it uh, seem more prob this makes getting him down more problematic. How did they get him up there? A noose? As one of those things that's easier to use one way around. He points at the buckle trying to the belt. Did they climb up using the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled him uh uh then they pulled the belt to the buckle. Could be. The shape of the branch supports the theory. I'm going to expect the tattoos. Uh, intricate web of blue line stretches across the torso from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in the crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddled his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. Is this a map of the night sky? A map of the stars? Uh, I do see some similarities. Customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of the filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates and your feelings were only half right. I'm missing something here. So am I. He pulls down a zipper of his orange jacket. He wears a wide leather belt around his waist and a gun holster under his arm. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminum from his coat pocket and pulls it open. It sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears, sort of a camera. Let the lieutenant work. Shikuma, what the fuck is that? An instant colored camera. He produces two metal capped uh, whatever and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. I have only two M fools, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points at the camera. The corpse peering into it. The lens needs adjusting. Then a small shrilled flash followed by the breaking of a small ample of glass. You see streams of color pour into the thick glossy paper rolling out. On it, a color perfect copy of the dead man's tattoo chest. In case we need it. Cool machine. Yes, he slides the camera into his belt. It's pretty cool, isn't it? There's only one use it wisely for. What do we need the photo for? Uh, contains it inside the victim's person. By his build, I'd say there was a man of physical violence. Okay, can I have it? Sure, just don't lose it. Cool. Look him in the eyes. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There's no one home. Cool. Tell me who you are, dead man. The corpse is dead silent. <laughs> Who is he? He is male, 40 to 50 with an athletic build. All right, back off. Squint and take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post-mortem. You can use it to see if the corpse has been tampered with or the position in death. Observe. Only the lower extremities are pink. Uh, his face and hands are pink. Thighs too. I see it. We have a good pronounced discoloration. Relax your eyes. Okay, cool, whatever. Uh, so what do you think? I think he was upright after his death. I think he's dead. I agree. The world no longer stores his personality and uh, composition. There were time for that, and it ended seven days ago. <laughs> that sounds about right. I think he was upright after his death. Agreed. Seems like lynching to me. Could be he was moved after death. There's always a chance. Something's coming out of him. A pool of blood 
puke uh, purge liquid is dripping by. Okay, the victim appears to contain more than half a uh, kilogram digestion at the time of death. Uh, cool. Goddamn right, I'm a... Turn around. Militia laughter. Big Ed said something. I don't know. He's beaten up. See the bruises? I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Back off and catch your breath. So how do we get him down? He stops to think, then checks his notes. Are you sure we're finished with the examination? We might miss something. Step back and look first. Let's get him down. The seal reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought a uh, chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle approach for the belt. He doesn't actually think the challenge is unique. He thinks it's frustrating and annoying harder than he thought. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach it. We could saw the branch. We could shoot him down. Yeah! Shoot his head off. How? Uh, Point to it. Where the buckle holds the belt together. Where? Ah, yes. If the shot hits the belt, we might have a chance to release the belt. Now we're talking. They'll miss. The pigs will miss. Take the shot, Lieutenant. What's the worst thing that could happen? Yeah, why not? Take the shot. I'll blow his head off. Take it! Take the shot! Silence. The lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge into the barrel, separates scouring mark stick, and gives the, fight, the cartridge five uh, tucks. Come on, baby. Take it. Securing it in place. That's a Kaji A9090. It's mass-produced muzzle loader. blah, blah, blah. He then sets back. Shoot the motherfucker down. He's gonna fucking miss. Uh, the kid's voice is drowned by the shrill blast that echoes off the walls. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. He didn't hit the head, though. A lot of things went wrong with that shot. The Foster was the wrong choice. His shoulders were raised, but above all, he cannot trust his eyesight. Fucking idiot. Could have hit, uh, could have been, uh, hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? It's okay, man. Get your shit together. Try again, maybe? What now? It's beginning to look unlikely what can be done down without assistance. Okay. I'm gonna ask for another, and let's go ahead and let's look here real quick. Thought complete, we are now a feminist agenda. Heck yeah, dude. Heck yeah, dude. There is something you need to see, sir. We have found the remnants of an ancient artifact lodged in your hypo, uh, thalamus. It's a cylindrical object uh, piss weathered and smelling of liquor. The paint is peeling off, but you can clearly make out the letters revolutionary feminist agenda on the whole. It appears that some time ago before you became a joke, you were an actual feminist. Somehow you've come back to the conclusion. Perhaps you can work your way back. So we get plus one empathy could evolve into RFA and negative one electrochemistry would have to quit drugs to get there. Dang it. So we're less of a, a man. Uh, well, uh, a sexy man, I guess. So, alright, I'm gonna put a pause in the episode here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, comment. Let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button. Turn the game, comment, share your support. I'll see you guys later. Bye, everyone.